We're going to go over five proofs very quickly that Matthew chapter 24 cannot be written to Christians. Okay? If you have your King James Bible, open it up to Matthew chapter 24. We're going to look at verse uh, 14 first. It says, In this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Okay? There is no gospel of the kingdom preached in the Pauline epistles. Paul never told anybody that the gospel is that we preach is the gospel of the kingdom. He defines the gospel in 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 through 4 and doesn't mention anything about a kingdom. All right? And it's interesting because they'll try to say, the posties will try to say, well, this is for us, Matthew 24 is for us, Christians, when Christians didn't even exist in Matthew chapter 24. Christians, the disciples aren't called Christians until Acts chapter 11 verse 26, years and years and years after Jesus spoke in Matthew chapter 24. Jesus dies on the cross in Matthew chapter 27. And if you read Hebrews chapter 9, verses 15 through 17, the New Testament comes in with the death of the testator. So what are you doing going back before the cross to say, this is for us today? That's lie number one. That's the reason number one there, lie of the post-tribbers that says that this is for us. It's not for us. All right? Go down to the next verse, verse 15. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Uh, well, the posties don't understand. They read it, but they don't get it. How can the Antichrist stand in the holy place? Our body is the temple of God, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 16 through 17. Read it. Look it up. Pause the video and look it up. The temple of God for a Christian is your body. How can the Antichrist stand in there? And how can you see him standing in there? It's talking about a rebuilt temple in Jerusalem where the Antichrist sets himself up to be worshipped. Read your Bible. Study it. We can't be there. Argument number three. Go to the next verse, verse 16. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. What are Christians doing in Judea? Hmm? Jews are over there. In that land. Number four, go down to verse 20. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Show me where Paul ever told a Christian to keep the Sabbath day. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Show it to me. You can go to Romans chapter 13, verse 9, and look at the list of commandments that Christians are supposed to keep, and you will find that the Sabbath day is not mentioned. How can this be written to Christians then in Matthew chapter 24? It's not. Finally, look at verse 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. They shall see the, what? The sign. Who requires a sign? Well, you might want to look up 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22, and see that it's the Jews that require a sign. Matthew 24 is written to Jews. That's why this time period that's coming is called the time of Jacob's trouble in Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7. You see, all post-tribbers have to teach replacement theology at some point in time. Now you get some of the green ones, they'll get in there and they'll say, Oh no, no, I still believe in the nation of Israel and you know, God's chosen nation and all the other stuff. You know? But eventually they're going to have to become replacement theology teachers. And now they're just openly admitting it. Oh, yeah, yeah, we teach it, you know, replacement theology. See, they have to go back here and steal Matthew chapter 24 and apply it to the church. And it's funny because you can really see the real motivation behind the whole thing is a Catholic works-based salvation system. Why? Because they believe that they have to endure to the end to be saved. Verse 13, works have to be part of it. You have to get through the thing without taking the mark of the beast or die as a martyr. You're going to go through some really rough times. And it's God that's going to be doing it to you. Read Revelation. You say, well, no, the first three and a half years, uh, the first three and a half years is, is, is uh, uh, um, you know, man thing. Uh, who opens the seals? Jesus Christ opens the seals. But see, the posties, they don't want you to understand that. They want you to just kind of say, well, the first three and a half years is kind of a bad time of weather you know, and problems and wars and things like that. It's going to be a bad time and the Antichrist will be there and whatever. No, actually, it's the Lord that's causing the whole thing. But they don't want you to know that. All 
post tribbers must use Matthew chapter 24 to prove their system. Without a doubt, every single one of them. You will never find one post tribber that can prove that Christians go through this time of Jacob's trouble by relying solely on what Paul wrote, the Pauline epistles. They all have to take Matthew chapter 24 that's not even written to Christians and apply it to Christians. They all have to say it. They all have to go there. Show me one that doesn't. Show me one. I made the statement way back in 2009. I came out with a thing called Post-Trib Rapture Thieves. came out with a study on it. And I played example after example after example and answered them from the scriptures. They're wrong. But I played all these examples of post-tribbers. Not one of them, not one of them was able to stick with the Pauline epistles to prove that Christians go through the time of Jacob's trouble. They all went to Matthew 24 or Mark 13 or Luke 17 or Luke 21. Not one of them could stay away from this, this passage here, Matthew chapter 24. That's the main one that they'll go to. But you just read the passage, it can't apply to Christians. So who are you going to believe? The Word of God or some post-tribber? You better be careful who you listen to.